also on Zoom. We will be doing a special activity, so I'd like to invite you to be prepared with some yarn or some paper or something to draw with or write with, and we'll tell you more about that when we get there. And I want to thank our team leading worship this morning. We have our religious education director, Colleen, our music director, Katie, our accompanist, Vanessa, the OK Corral, our guest musicians, Mike, Benny, and Marilee, our ushers and greeters, our tech team, Julie, David, and Ginny, who also prepared our slides. Oh, we value community. It's one of the primary reasons we come together each week. So we take time at the beginning of our service to greet one another, to, to say hello on Zoom and breakout rooms and here, face to face, voice to voice. All right, now, as we're together, let's take a moment to breathe deeply. Feel the energy as we enter into our time of community. Let's invite the Spirit to be present and open our hearts to life and the gift of this day, for it is a gift. As we reflect on creating community by building spiritual bridges and real bridges, stay tuned to connect us to one another. Come, let us worship together. When I was 17 years old and a senior in high school, I found myself in physics class. My teacher, Mr. Sikar, was a great man who completely understood that I had no business being in a physics class. <laughs> Science wasn't a strength of mine, and he knew it. Our final project was to build a bridge with a partner and have a class competition. The bridge that I built with my partner, Billy, was not very strong. In fact, it was crushed almost immediately under the weight of 10 whole pounds and crumbled in spectacular fashion before the class. And while I can't say that structural integrity of the bridge wasn't the real lesson, because, well, it was physics class, I can say that I was able to build a strong bridge during this lesson anyway. It just wasn't for a grade. Billy and I hadn't been friends before that assignment. And that bridge and its glorious failure bridged a friendship for the two of us. And we are still friends today some 30 years later. And Mr. Secar, well, he gave us a very generous C+. Plus, <laughs> citing our teamwork and can-do spirit. Rumi says that love is the bridge between you and everything. This morning, we will reflect on bridges that we build to one another and what we need to make those bridges strong. Will you build with us? As Unitarian Universalists, we light a flame within a chalice to unite us in worship 
and to remind us of our ongoing search for the light of truth within us and among us. The chalice is also a light to guide us on our shared journey and a reminder that we are all interconnected in the great web of existence of which we are all each a beloved part. As Riley comes forward to share, to light our shared chalice, I invite those of you on Zoom to light your home chalice. Thank you, Riley. Please join me in the words of our chalice lighting by Susan David Archer. They will be on your screen. The earth is warming, the bird song increases, the sweeter breezes brush our cheeks, and the earth holds up in seeds and buds. Come, let us light our chalice this morning with joyful noise, with warm hearts, with hopeful spirits. For we are one with the renewal of the earth and held in the love of one another. Once upon a time, or maybe long, long ago, there was a village. It was a prosperous and happy place, and the people were kind and wise, and all people were welcomed, unique and celebrated for who they are. Sharing their gifts and skills, the children were above average and made their beds every morning. <laughs> the village's farms grew the best vegetables. Their sheep produced the finest wool. Their goats had milk that made the tastiest cheese. And the town square had the prettiest flowers. The village was clean and everything was kept in very good repair. People helped each other and cared for each other and they were led by a kind and wise mayor who knew everyone in the village. Every day was an opportunity to say hello to share news and be thankful for living in such a great place. When someone was sick or injured, everyone helped them out, and people all cared for each other. We're like that village. Actually, we are that village. A community where people care for one another. We have good things that happen, and there are hard things too. So now to care for one another, we're going to take some silence together, then share our concerns and our joys knowing that we heal when others listen to us, and that celebration is even better when we do it together. Let's begin with a time of silence together to nurture our spirits. Spend some time in a practice that's meaningful for each one of us, whether that's prayer or reflection, gratitude, meditation, or just simply being. This is a time to remember who we truly are, to reflect on life and to reconnect with that sacred mystery that is the heart of life itself. So let's be together in silence. Let's return. When we share a sorrow, a loss, or a struggle, the burden is lightened. So in that spirit, we take time now to share those things that are on our hearts. If you're on Zoom and have a sorrow, loss, or struggle to share with us, please use the chat box. We have these. Marianne shares that her friend Ming died this morning. We send Marianne our love and care as she grieves and remembers this person. Vivian shares that my former colleague, Carol Donnelly, is transitioning to hospice. We pray for a, a peaceful time. Lori and Wendy ask for continued prayers for Aunt Lori. She battles brain cancer and now has COVID. We're thinking of you, Lori. Brooke shares a concern. Many in Northeast Iowa, oh, Iowa. No, no, no. Yeah, four, yeah, Randy is up there. Four letters, wrong state, sorry. One more time. Many in Northeast Ohio are without power. They are all in our hearts, and hopefully power will be restored quickly. May that be so. Okay, that's the end 
Let's see what we have. Okay. Let's take a moment to hold in our hearts those who have lost loved ones due to the severe storms in the south and those who have lost homes or had their property damaged because of the storms. If there's anyone on your heart that you've not mentioned in a yellow card, you're welcome to speak their names out loud now to remember them. Let's come together now in the spirit of prayer with these words of Lynn Cox. Spirit of life that is ever adapting and renewing, we are together this morning with yearnings. Our yearnings don't match. We want stability for even a moment of feeling like we know what is going on, the ability to predict and prepare for what is coming next. And yet we yearn for change. We are aching for a world that turns away from racism, from violence, from dehumanizing one another, a world that disregards suffering. We pray for a change, for a change in illness, grief, isolation, incarceration, and vulnerability for our loved ones. We pray for hearts that will reach out for connections, reminding us that we are worthy as we are, and we reach for connections that will help us become our best selves. Help us cherish the eternal presence of love and encourage us on our path of growth and development. As individuals and as people, help us to become all that we can be, all that we are called to be. Lead us to open pathways of deeper wisdom through reconciliation, through self-respect and mutual respect, through compassion, through owning and making amends for our mistakes. Source of wonder, move us to express and live in gratitude for the beauty of our world, for the loving people in our lives, and for this day with all its possibilities. May it be so. And as we reflect on the source of wonder, we have had those moments that have brought joy. So we, should, we take time to share those now. Gene and Robert, uh, first grandbaby is due in six weeks. Congratulations, yay. Oh, We'll hold your family in our hearts since he'll require heart surgery when he's born. So delight and, and yet worry. The Sussman family shares that Jordan turned three already <laughs> and had a great first week in preschool. Yeah, thank you for the good news. Now, with gratitude for these and every blessing we received in life, for the gift of life itself, for the companionship of each other on our journey, for the beauty of our world, and for all the possibilities today offers, let us raise our hearts in gladness and together say, Amen. Amen. Now you're welcome to remain seated as we join in singing our hymn of community with Benny accompanying us, number 346. Come sing a song with me.
It had been, oh, yes, go for it. <laughs> <clears throat> it had been a long, cold, stormy winter, but the village gathered regularly in their new social hall with its big fireplace, commercial kitchen, and room for everyone to be together. The village would gather in the building regularly, but especially in the winter, where they had potlucks and played games, watched movies, and told stories around the fire. One evening, just before spring arrived, they were together in the hall and it was very stormy. The wind howled and all of a sudden there was a loud crack. The villagers rushed outside to see that the bridge across the deep river gorge fell into the river and was swept away. Oh no, our bridge, it's gone. What will we do? How will I sell my cheese to the other villages? How will I sell my vegetables? In our bakery, people come from miles around to buy the best bread made right here in our village. This is a disaster. The bridge was the fastest connection to the village and other villages nearby. There was another way to get to the village, but it was many miles downstream and a full day of travel one way. Then the mayor of the village said, We can't do anything tonight. Thank goodness we're all safe and the storm didn't damage anything else. Let's go back inside and we'll listen to some music. I'm grateful that we still have each other and I know that together we can figure out what to do. Gladly walk across the desert with no shoes upon my feet. Share with you the last bite of bread I had to eat. I would swim out to save you in your sea of broken dreams. And all your hopes are sinking. Let me show you what love means. Love can. Don't you think it's time? 
The next morning, it was time to solve the problem of the bridge. <laughs> Nothing like this had happened, so no one knew what to do. The mayor got out his mayor manual, but there was, <laughs> there was nothing in it about how to replace a bridge. <laughs> and they certainly hadn't covered this in mayor school. So he called the council of wise nabobs together to explain the problem. Oh, mighty council of wise nabobs, what shall we do? The wise nabobs flipped through their manuals and compared notes and read the fine print and even gobbled the problem, Googled the problem, but they gobbled it. <laughs> they Googled the problem. <laughs> but there was nothing in their wise nabob council's manual or in the fine print. Google had no answer either. One of the wise nabobs finally said, Well, um, this is a serious problem indeed. There's only one thing to do. We need a consultant. We need several consultants. So the mayor got on the internet and Googled village bridge consultants, and the mayor checked TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. The next thing you know, everyone was in town getting, everyone in town was getting village bridge consultants on their Facebook pages, and the people were coming from left and right, all of whom said they were certified, experienced, and Angie's List approved village bridge <laughs> consultants. <laughs> The village spent money to pay these consultants, some of whom arrived via helicopter, which scared the sheep and sent big clouds of dust everywhere. People were constantly cleaning up the dust, plus there was the noise and the confusion. And the cost. Consultants are very expensive. The consultants had lots of ideas. One said, You need to move the village. Build a new one on the other side of the river. Another said, The best thing to do is dig a tunnel under the river. Another consultant suggested a fleet of airplanes to travel across the river to other villages. One consultant recommended hiring Amazon to deliver goods back and forth, but another argued that UPS was the best delivery service. Another said, tie a rope to a strong tree and swing across the river to the other side. And another suggested jetpacks so that people could fly across the river. The villagers heard all these ideas and began to argue about what to do. They complained about all the money they were spending and not one consultant listened to what they actually wanted, which was a bridge. Then the villagers began to argue over what to use to build a new bridge. And one person wanted a gleaming steel bridge. Another person wanted, hold on, let me find my place. Okay. Another wanted an elegant stone bridge. One villager thought the new bridge should be made out of wood and be a covered bridge. And yet another wanted a glass bridge so that you could see the river when you crossed it. Someone else thought the bridge could be made out of Legos, which made the children very unhappy. They didn't want to give up their Legos. <laughs> As the villagers stood wondering about the mess they were in, the mayor and the council of wise nabobs came out and asked for everyone's attention, but the people were chattering and continuing to argue among themselves. It was then that the village troubadour had an idea and began singing, because there is something very special about music. It can bring people together. The mayor called everyone in the village together for an emergency meeting. The mayor spoke softly and chose their words carefully. We must find a way to move forward together. Right now, we are divided and squabbling with each other, and this will only drive us further and further away from getting our new bridge. A low rumble of concerns and whispers of worry floated through the air. But how? This is impossible. I don't know how we're going to do this. It's too oh, hard. Oh, gosh. Yeah. There's no way. Oh, boy. Hub, up, 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 up. I can't up. afford a bridge. Hub, up, hub, up, hub, up. <laughs> <laughs> It was then that a small voice broke through the hubbub and the fuss. I know what to do. I read about a bridge in Peru that is made entirely of grass. Grass? Why, that's absurd. You can't build a bridge out of grass. What an intriguing idea. Let's listen and see if it's possible. There is a 900-foot-long suspension bridge in Peru that crosses a deep 
River Gorge, the native people, the Incas, have been building bridges out of grass for over 500 years. A grass bridge doesn't last forever. We'd have to rebuild it each year, but it could be a community project we do with everyone helping. Here's what we need to do. We collect blades of grass and weave them together to form a cord. Then we weave the cords together to form ropes and then braid three ropes together to form a cable. We'll need six cables, four for the base and two for the handrails. Once we've run the cables across the river, we'll weave more cords in and out of the cables to make the bridge floor and sides. All right, villagers. <laughs> you have your instructions. Clear as mud? Just. <laughs> All right, so let's begin. We're going to work together. We're going to do a little activity, and you can choose to participate as you are willing and able. I do have a few team captains I want to call on to just help keep us organized. But you have all the materials you need up here. And the key is working together to twist and braid and create and suspend. Your challenge will be to create a bridge in about five to seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Attach your creations to your posts. This side has posts here and here. And this side of the congregation has a post here and here. So you don't have to do anything in the middle, <laughs> just <laughs> on either side. Um, and because we are Unitarian Universalists, it is my duty to say to you, do not overthink this. <laughs> <laughs> and go. <laughs> Colleen, <laughs> yes. what do our friends on Zoom get to do? Our friends on Zoom, thank you for reminding me. Our friends on Zoom, please weave together your yarn or paper, use your writing implements to draw a bridge, or write in the chat about, maybe give some instructions to the people here on the ground. <laughs> All right, let's go. Go, go. <laughs>
to take the ropes from your friends on the outside here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done. What, babe? All right, we're we're. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just good I, enough. Just... <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said we can't overthink this. <laughs> and we are complete, ish. <laughs> Yay! All right. Teamwork. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, the village worked together and the result was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to thank those who were busy knitting a bridge in there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yes. Oh, a rainbow bridge. <laughs> and then the most exciting moment of this whole process came. It was time to test the bridge. <laughs> so I invite the children to come on up and let's test our bridge. <laughs> but I have confidence it will hold. You know why? Because what did we build this bridge with? Love. Exactly. So let's have our children come up. I see, you it's can have holding. a seat right here on the bridge. <laughs> and it holds you. It holds you beautifully. <laughs> Come on in. We build a bridge, everyone. Congratulations. A bridge between people enables the passage of ideas. It enables to, uh, help to physically be connected. It opens up the opportunity for people to get what they need. It encourages exploration. It's a more efficient way of getting from one point to another. Unless it, you're the choir. Unless you're the choir. <laughs> <laughs> it increases the range of options available. It makes space for unity, friendship, connection. These things are ours when we build bridges together. But even better than bridges made of stone and grass and concrete, you, we, can be bridges. You can build a bridge by reaching out your hand to someone. Your smile could be the sunshine that helps a friendship to grow. Your listening ears and your loving heart and your imaginative minds can do the work of the hands weaving hope and justice and love together. And these kinds of bridges can bring the whole world together. And so I wonder, as is my way, <laughs> How are you a bridge? I'd love to know. Julie has a mic back there. How are you a bridge in this world? How are you weaving love and justice and hope into the world? Simon, did you have your hand up? Um, last week, I got a lightsaber. <laughs> yes! <laughs> A lightsaber, yes. <laughs> Adults as well, how are you a bridge in this world? <laughs> Sana says, I listen. How are you a bridge in this world? Back here, Elliot. Personal courage and integrity. Personal courage and integrity. Katie. Helping others. Helping others. Oh. Loving. Loving. Jenny, shout it out. Back here, Jenny. Yes! Hi, Zoomers! <laughs> Connecting people on Zoom with, with this Ooh. room, staying connected. Huh? Playing together. Being safe with each other and with ourselves, yes. Ooh. Colleen? Oh. Being inclusive, what does Zoom have to say? Teamwork makes the dream work. Yes! Yes. Thank you, Madison. Any other answers for us this morning? Caring. Caring. Trish? The Celtic Clan is bringing music to facilities where people can't leave to go to concerts. Yes, the Celtic Clan going to places where, the facilities where people can't leave to bring music to people. 
Back in the back here. Is that, is that Carol? Making warm socks to keep people's feet warm. Making warm socks. <laughs> yes. yes. And hats, says Elaine. And hats, yeah. Stella. And blankets. Slippers. Slippers. Mm. Let's keep people warm and cozy, right? <laughs> well, thank you, friends. We are building these bridges together. And when our bridge needs care and repair, that's when our best selves gather together in a way that feels sure and safe and strong so that our bridge is built well with everyone doing their part as best they can. And that is how we change the world. <laughs> Thank you for doing your part. <laughs> so we discovered a secret this morning that we already knew that anything is possible when we work together. It helps our community thrive and grow. We build bridges between one another. There are other ways we build bridges. We share what we have with each other and with the world. So we help others in our community thrive. We build a bridge to them by giving to agencies and organizations in Kent and beyond that serve those in need. And I don't need to mention how special it is that we're supporting Kent, the socially responsible sweatshop of Kent who build bridges between people who have things they need and have talents to put things together and providing funds for people who are food insecure, a real bridge of caring. Thank you, Sweatshop, and Mary Ann, its leader and founder. So in the spirit of building bridges between one another and our world and with gratitude for the abundance that makes our generosity possible, let's give and receive the offering as a sign of our willingness to build bridges. Will the ushers please come forward?
with their new bridge complete. The villagers gathered outside to celebrate the arrival of spring before they would go into the social hall for one of their spring traditions, which was a pancake breakfast. <laughs> so the villagers were all together outside. They were on their feet feeling jubilant. Would you rise as you're able? And they took a deep breath together. And they said, spring has arrived. What do you think? How did they do? Yeah? Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> the mayor, who was very demanding, said, not bad, but let's do it again. So one more time, a deep breath. And they said together, spring has arrived. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and spring has arrived. I hope you take time this week to rejoice to be outdoors and to welcome it in a way that is meaningful. To prepare us to do that, to return to the world, would you join me now in extinguishing the chalice? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. May we carry these in our hearts and minds until we are together again. Would you join now in singing our closing hymn, Lo, the Earth Awakes Again. Number 61 in your gray hymnals. Just in case you missed it, the great pancake breakfast returns. We will have pancakes for sale in Hobbs Hall right after this service. There will be good food, good fun, and lively conversation as always. Oh, well, well. <laughs> it's, thanks, Kay, but it's rude to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> And secondly, the Race for Justice team will have a table in Hobbs Hall about our upcoming Living the Pledge to End Racism two-part workshop next month in April. Please talk with Christy and Brooke to learn more about the workshop, and please sign up to participate. This is important work we do together. There is a very prolific writer named Anonymous who said, May the bridges you build be high enough to reach the stars and kiss the moon, yet low enough to smell the flowers or touch the tears of a child. May be open enough to see where you're going, yet long enough to see how far you've come. May it be narrow enough when you need to travel alone, yet wide enough to let love travel with you. May it last for a lifetime as you travel out into the world, and may it be there when you need to come home. Now as we celebrate the arrival of spring, 
and we continue to build the bridges of love that connect us to each other and all of life and help us to reach for the stars. Let us go forth with hope and joy as we continue to inspire love, work for justice, and grow together in beloved community. May it be so. Blessed be. Amen. And I see love's light in you. <laughs>